the Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview with the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are two actresses. One established, Judith Chapman, and one working to be established, Melanie Belugian. Actress Judith Chapman was born in Gainesville, South Carolina, the daughter of a U.S. Air Force Brigadier General whose name was Leland Shepard, Jr. You've seen her on stage, in film, and lots of TV shows. She joined the cast of The Young and Restless in 2005, and she's an avid yoga buff, an instructor. She uh, loves the stage. She loves Directing. Directing, producing, acting. And you're a restaurateur besides. Yes. So Judith received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the, De the Desert Theater League mm -hmm. in a ceremony in Palm Springs at the Riviera Resort. Now, what were you doing in Palm Springs? Well, I actually live there when I'm not here. Oh, you still and, live there? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And my other half, James, uh, has had restaurants there for almost 25 years or 25 years. And actually, we just sold our last restaurant about oh. six months ago. So now retired from the restaurant business, thank God. But isn't it a tough business? <laughs> oh, honey, it's, it's, it's just like show business. And for a while, I dropped out of L.A. for a while and was helping James build a new restaurant and running the front of the house. And I said, it's showtime. It's just what? like leave your attitude at the door. Is the people, are the people happy? Did they have a good performance? Did they like their Did seat? Did they eat? Did, Did they, they like the table? <laughs> <laughs> they like the table. Just like show business. But why were you in Palm Springs? I just, I was interested. Introduced to Palm Springs years and years ago when I first moved to LA from New York, having worked in New York, and I just fell in love with it. I just fell in to love with live it. To so, live there? Not well. At full time, you were living full time, there, weren't I owned you? A, owned a home. I still own a home there. And but I dropped out of LA um, in the early '90s and already had a house in the desert. And I just went, I'm done for a while. So I went to the desert, and that's when I really started focusing on my directing, getting uh. very serious about my yoga and teaching, which I don't anymore. I don't have time to, unfortunately. Um, and But I taught at the college there. That's very interesting. I thought the College of the Desert, college which the is desert. a great it's a wonderful, school. wonderful, wonderful. And when I realized I'd sold my house in L.A. and moved to the desert full time, I said, now I need to do something. So I went to the college and I said, well, I'm Judith Chapman. I've done this and this and this. Well, and you had quite hired. a resume, didn't oh, yeah. you? Yes. Oh, so yeah, you went already. in with a big resume. But I, yeah, I said, if you ever want me to come talk to your students, they uh -huh. hired me on the spot. And I ended up teaching there for several, several semesters. But what did you teach? I taught theater. Taught acting, theater. Yes. A reading, absolute, a a acting, everything based on my work in the, from the actor's studio, based on my uh, work with one of my favorite teachers, a man named uh, Ositinsky, Leonidas Ositinsky, uh, wonderful old man from the Polish um, th tradition of theater. And we never studied scenes. We only did yoga. We did vocal oh, work. So, so I had these kids doing all these crazy things. So did you have students who really wanted to be actors? Yes, I did. And a because lot of them have gone, a lot of them, have, you know, it wasn't just a community college thing. A lot of them have gone on to ACT and St. Judith. And so you're we, kidding. Oh, no, that's no, no. what I wondered. So I feel if that very is... nurturing of my little students. Oh, that's there. great. That's mm -hmm. what I wondered if, if yeah. you were doing that. Did you teach? Um, Part, was it partly yoga too? So absolutely, to teach them absolutely. that part of it, I, I made everybody. Ha we started with vocal work. We started with body work, and then we would do specific exercises and whatnot. So and, you then, were, and we did do scene work. So you you did scene work. You mm -hmm. were teaching mm -hmm. at the College mm -hmm. of the Desert. You taught, were in the front of the house in your restaurant. Yes, and you didn't care about Hollywood. You didn't care if you out. came back. I dropped out. But I was still working. I mean, it was during that time that I did four Murder She Wrote, so five. Film so if you stalking. did come up, so I was, I was doing some film work, and but I was really getting back to my theater roots and uh, loving directing. So I would call my agents, much to their chagrin, and they just, kept you. And they said, they said, I said, I, I don't, don't waste my time unless it's something important, and or something that turns me on. And so, but I started directing, found my passion for theater again. 
Ergo, when I, this uh -huh. opportunity to go back on Young and the Restless, I told James, I said, it's time. I need to get back to L.A. It just came full circle. And some people were surprised because they, you committed career suicide. What? I just e expanded my career. You did expand yourself. Expand. You took time. Well, took that's time what nobody to takes, teach. time to mm -hmm. take time out and to really make themselves better, exactly. which is what you were doing. Exactly. They say if you work with students, it makes you better. Joan, it's so revived and recharged my passion for the craft just hmm. the mere fact of teaching so whatever they got from me believe me i got you it tenfold back, back. That's what but they then say. when i came back to la and started working i ran into my old friend john flan from stevens college oh, yeah, you, <laughs> he was much older than i when he was there but. he went to stevens college yes, with you where you yes, yes. did you take drama there too that's i'm a theater major from Absolutely. there yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. so was, he was there too he was there much older as we like to jokingly yes we like say. to say but uh, he asked me to join this new theater company rogue machine theater oh. And I told him uh, that I had formed this company, the Troubadours of Daytime, using all of us soap actors, daytime actors who love theater. And we, this will be our third production. We're doing a, a benefit performance for Rogue Machine Theater in a couple of weeks. Lots of soap actors. Orson Bean's going to be in it. Ali, Ali Mills from Bold and the Beautiful. Me, Christian LeBlanc. Who plays your son. Who plays my <laughs> son. We're this close in age, as I say, but uh, no. But so, he's playing your son. But he plays my son. But, just before you met John Flynn, hadn't you done this Orson's uh, oh, Shadow? Oh, that was see, I was down in at uh, San Diego for the Old Glow for three months. I auditioned for or, the West Coast premiere of Orson's Shadow, based on these titans of the industry, or uh, uh, Laurence Olivier and Orson Welles, right. and they try to meet and work together. And I play the still lovely but slightly deranged Vivian Lee. Were you, you kind of drinking? Um, no, they're really not on stage. Not on was stage, she stage, but was she, she drinking? She. Uh, um, at the time of this, yes, she was, you know, she was just, she just had a lot of emotional was illness. Was more emotional. She was with but both she of was, them? But she was, she was, no, no, she was never Orson's lover. But he, but uh, Olivier had already left her and moved on to Joan Plowright. And oh, was that's trying what to it was. break it off. But it was such a thrill to be in the West Coast premiere. And, and I, but uh, what I got to do eight times a week was have a complete meltdown on stage. But that voice of yours, it was Dang perfect yeah, for that, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And you had the meltdown. And I got, because it, it was written, or, um, um, Austin Pendleton, who wrote the play, came out and Did worked with out? us. Yeah. He came and worked with us at the Old Globe. But he had written it so Vivian would run off stage and have this manic meltdown. And it was so far off. I said, well, I can run very fast. I'm very athletic. But I told the director, Kyle Donnelly, I said, let me do it on stage. I can break let down me, there. And I said, because it, the whole <laughs> stage uh, was in the round or in the square was surrounded by chairs and I just sort of tumbled myself over these chairs eight times a week. It was pretty it was pretty fun. Was it hard? It was a scene stealer. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Anything for that, right? Anything for the show, darling. Uh, Anything so for great. the show. But see, here you are, this voice, mm. and you're doing a Tennessee Williams Tennessee play. Williams. I'm getting, Tell we're, us we're, what's, a, what's a reading. What's a stage well, reading? Well, it's a stage reading, and this will be our third one. I'm not directing this one. Alina, wonderful Alina DeSantos is. But it's a stage reading, but we, knowing us soapers, and having only done this soapers, several times, huh? we only soap. The Troubadours of Daytime. That's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but we, ninety percent of the time we're ninety percent off book. So the book is there, but there is a lot of movement. There's a lot of um, staging. You move of, around. Of, you don't just sit in a chair and read. No, absolutely not. But do you absolutely use a script not. while you're? It will is that be what a there. reading is? It I is don't a know. reading, but this is a reading so beyond a reading. It will be a reading with blocking, with props. Oh. So it's not it's not cold and sterile and dry. It is very full and rich. So there's the different kinds of readings. If you're reading f f for say investors, you wouldn't do something like this, would you? For a staged reading, um, you would just, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering. No, what I kind would of want to. Readings? I would want to embellish it as much as possible. Oh, even and if this it is, were this for is, them. This is, this, is, this is what I've always done in, in the previous productions. But doing on the weekend of November seventh and November eighth. Or whether you're a soap fan or not, come out and support this incredible theater. Tell me where it is. Rogue Machine Theater is on Pico, and I don't have the phone number. I can't no, believe it. Oh, wait. It's, the phone number's right, right here. Um, but this is one of the last shows I did, our fundraiser we did last spring for them. 
but it's on Pico and Was it and with the Troubadours yes, as well? Yes, yes, and I directed it, produced it, and it said, when egos, ambition, and sexuality collide, how will the evening end? Well, how will that it end? That was the end? last page. That, no, this isn't <laughs> Night of the Iguana, but I want to tell your friends, my, your friends out there, your fans out there, by phone, 323-930-0740. I love your glasses. And it's 5041 <laughs> West Pico, so oh, why you can't right. have them. Right. Okay, but, so who reads with you in this play? It, well, your it's going to be Christian, Christian LeBlanc, okay. Allie Mills from Bold and the Beautiful, right. Emily O'Brien, David Lago, also from Young and the Restless, mm -hmm. the great Orson Bean. And what size it, theater is it? This is a lovely, it's, a, it's, a, it's considered a smaller house, so an equity waiver house. 99? 99. 99. Fantastic. But we did a, two sold-out performances last spring and raised a bunch of money from them, and then we all get together, and fans can come and have drinks and cocktails so and whatnot. it's really a good networking, too. Oh, it's wonderful. So, but, so... But you read, you're on every day, every day, every day. You have to learn your lines. Mm -hmm. How is it different on the stage? Is it easier, harder? What do you do? Well, usually on the soap, unless your storyline is very high, you're not working every, every day. Oh, I, I mean, when I first came on the show, first six months, I was working five days a week. Now I'm down to about two days because my storyline's ah. kind of tapered off a but bit. But do you have to memorize everything Absolutely. overnight? Absolutely. And you have to go home and do your homework. We can't be out hobnobbing around Hollywood. Well, one of actors, the things... Soap actors work hard. <laughs> After you've been working so and hard, you know. 60, 70, 80 pages a day. So. I can't believe it. I mean, it just looks so hard to do. But in 2009, you went to the daytime Emmys all in white. Uh, all in white because we weren't at the Kodak <laughs> Theater this year, and it was very hot. And it was at the beautiful um, theater downtown, which they'd redone, wonderful Art Deco. So an homage to Valentino, oh, that's <laughs> not the designer, the actor, Rudolph Valentino. So I did my desert princess thing. And Your whatnot. jewelry. My jewelry all from India because James and I do a great deal of traveling. Your fan. My fan. And your club. My fan. Always the fan. So are you glad to be on stage in L.A.? I love it. And the fact that I was able to direct, I'm now officially a, a L.A. theater director. And I oh. hope to direct more shows at uh, Rogue Machine. Not, not staged readings. But, but actual Absolutely. Well, I've done a lot of theater in L.A., but so, but to be involved with this theater company that is truly considered the hottest new theater company, we're just closing our second season. I was with John yesterday at a seminar. John Flynn. John Tell Flynn, the artistic director. Him. We went to school. He had been on the board of directors for Tim Robbins' group, the Actors oh, Gang. Right, the and actors he decided game. it was time to have his own theater again. So he branched off and built this theater, called me, asked me to be a part of it, along with many other people. Not that they No, did. because you're so ambitious. I'm just so... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm a cheerleader, Joan. I'm a I cheerleader. It's like, okay. Because when I'm not with my pink nails and full drag makeup on, I can do on, it. on camera, I'm down there painting and staple gunning. But that's what, and, and that's what we do if we love the theater. Isn't that right? That's and what and that's what do. my troubadours of daytime. And that's what you're they, teaching. They, yeah. People. You're teaching your students to do Have the passion that. for the craft. Otherwise, my great, one of my great teachers at Stevens, wonderful woman named Jean Muir, who was around a million years ago and was part of the horrible communist thing in, in the 50s, oh, she was black drop, dropped out, but ended up at Stevens College, but gave me the best piece of advice I've ever been given, and I always pass this on. She said, darling, if you can live without it, do. <laughs> But so, I can't live without it, so I keep I keep painting and, and but she's learning right. my lines. She's right. She's absolutely you, right. Do without it. You don't need or you don't be need passionate, the other. right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh well, we and can we see at Rogue, your passion. Thank you, Joe. We at Rogue Machine <laughs> Theater, so come out, have a drink with us after the show. She's see us get a little crazy on stage, and I, I of course get to play the Ava Gardner part. <laughs> she's so great. Thank you, Judith. <laughs> thank you so much, Joe. So glad you came out today. Thank don't you. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Melanie Belugian. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm with Melanie Belugian, who was born in Los Angeles and raised in Orange County. She went to UC Irvine, uh, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts in Film and History. Melanie then studied at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London, where she worked on the stage in the theater. But besides that, you've seen her in lots of TV shows. She's been on uh, in films and films like 
Let's Fine. start this over, okay? Yeah. I didn't like that. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. That's good. It's the only time we can do that. Mm. Start over. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with Melanie Belugian, who was born in Los Angeles and raised in Orange County. She went to UC Irvine, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts in Film and History. Melanie then studied at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London, where she worked in the theater. And you've seen her on lots of TV shows. She's been in films like Don't Mess with the Zohan, and The First 20 Million is Always the Hardest, and that great role that you have in Blind Ambition. Did show business run in your family? No, it didn't actually. <laughs> Not at How did all. you ever get started? Um, my dad was a jazz musician, so he, oh. he was an artist, but. Um, in a different vein. In a different sort of thing. So um, I just got the acting bug, you know, when I was in college. And I. Uh, was not until you were college? Well, I always kind of had it in me, but I didn't really explore, you know. I mean, when I was little, I used to put on little productions of um, I Love Lucy. My grandma was a huge <laughs> fan, so we used to watch that together. It. And I'm still a huge fan. And I used to call my friends over and do little productions in the backyard and that kind of stuff. So I, I did have that in me, but. Um, Career-wise, it was more like go to law school, you know, study something oh, that's were... going to put bread and butter on the table. That's kind of the route I was going. Originally. That was kind of an Armenian family thing, yes, isn't yes, it? Like yeah. get a job, uh -huh, and then uh -huh. this other stuff isn't really a job. But if your father was a jazz musician, did he make his living like that? When he was younger, he oh, did. Oh, he did? Yeah. And then, you so know, he knew, <laughs> go to law school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then what happened was I had a class where um, I took a directing class, and then, you know, we were filming this... Um, I was more. I was behind the camera, and I worked with this other individual. Uh, his name was Sam Lee. Actually, it was great, and we were auditioning actresses for a role in our, you know, film, short film that, that we were, you were doing. Do. And we couldn't find what we were looking for. And I said, you know, this we're looking for this, and we wanted. Why don't you just do it? And I thought, okay, all right. So you'll film it, and because I'm supposed to be behind the camera too. And I said, okay, well, you know, let's do it. So we did it, and I really liked it. Uh -huh. And um, that kind of started the whole thing. And our uh, professor, he actually, we won a contest, you know, the university, and they chose our movie as like the film of the year. And we're in the archives now. So every time. Is that know, right? Yeah. How long was it? The um, film? Just like five short minutes. Film? Really it was like short, short yeah, film. Yeah. But, but that was the first time you got in front of the camera? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think so. And that was just because you were making your own film and you, yeah. to, and you couldn't cast yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't plays in junior high school and, you know, yeah. I was in drama in high school, but... But when you were in Orange County mm -hmm. and here you are at Irvine, you've finally been bitten by the acting bug and you graduate, how did you ever think of going to RADA? Well, I had some classes in L.A., and my teacher was a huge theater buff, and she really encouraged me to either go to New York or... Oh, you came up to L.A.? Yeah, I to did, take acting at the same classes? time, yeah, Obviously. sort of commuting back and forth. And she really encouraged me. She was a theater actress, and she, um, uh. Stephanie Fury, and Peggy Fury was oh, her mother. Oh, Stephanie Fury, yeah. of course, I know her. Uh -huh. and, and Peggy, Yeah, her of mom, course. and oh, she's her a, dad. She's great, mm -hmm. so she was into that. Yeah, so she really got me excited about that whole thing and, and said, you know, theater would be good for you. So I applied and I got in and so I went to RADA. And you were lucky because somebody was just telling me the other day, she says, oh, I was auditioning for classes at RADA years ago. Mm -hmm. And she said, and they told me that I didn't have enough passion and to go back and study and come back with passion. And she said, I was so arrogant as a 19-year-old. I thought, what, is it? what are they talking about? I can be an actress. And of course, today she's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Stephanie was very passionate. Yeah, she was like in there, you know. And so I kind of, she rubbed off on me quite She's a bit. She's great. Yeah. I see her quite often. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, you know, staying in New York for a while after that and then came from, uh, from England mm -hmm. you came to New York? Came to L.A., then went to New York and then came were back to L.A. Were you being cast? Were you going on stage? Were, I was were doing you? some theater there off Broadway and I really wanted to get into film and TV. I kind of got... Oh, you did? Yeah, I really wanted to do that. So the natural progression was come to L.A., this is where, you know, all the film and TV is. So. Did you play yourself in other films or just this one film? Blind ambition. Because I, but because when I was reading your bio, it, it says you played yourself in some of these films. 
No. Um, I don't know I don't what they know. meant by that. I um, don't understand what it. But what, what kind of a role? I was a journalist you, in maybe one ambition, that's what so maybe it was. that's what they mean by myself because I'm I'm like oh, you a reporter. Played yourself, yeah, as a reporter. Yeah, so yeah. tell us about that. Um, um, it's it's a movie that. that's coming out this year, <laughs> and um, the director is Bala um, Raja Shakaruni. He's from India. Oh, is it a Bollywood film? It is. It is? It is, yeah. yeah Do you is. sing and dance? No, no. <laughs> but you might see me playing other roles if you look closely. Really? Yeah, they had me in, a, in, in, in another scene. Well, maybe that's why they say you play yourself. <gasps> okay, yeah. Because yeah. you know how they need to fill this exactly. scene sometimes. And it was oh, a smaller sort of film, but... It's, it's um, apparently people are interested, so we'll see what happens with so that. So is that the, like, and what did you do in Zohan? Because that was pretty funny. I was a dancer. Oh, because you dance. Yeah. Did you take a lot of dance classes as um, a child? Well, I did ballet when I was little, and I kind of got into, like, started to do ballroom and tango and salsa, and actually in the play, I do a little tango, but it's more of a comedic sort of a, Tango, it's not a real. It's but but you had the movement going on. Yeah, I had there. to basically train <laughs> my, uh, you know, one of my dance partner and then his understudy. So I choreographed it, I guess you yeah, could say. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> yeah. Do you continue to take acting lessons? Oh yeah. You I've, do. I've Where do always, you go? You're always, always, always. Yeah. Right now, um, I'm studying with Dwayne Whitaker. I don't He's know. A, with Jeremy Komaya Studios. And then I studied with Amy Linden, and she, she has her own so technique. you just keep going? You mm -hmm. just learn different techniques? Yeah, just always trying to build on, you know, what I have. And Are you a part just, of any theater company? Not right now. No. But is this theater, well, we'll talk, Pan mm -hmm. Andreas is where your, your play is mm -hmm. now. Do they have a theater company there, or is this just using the theater? We're using the theater. I see. Okay, yeah. so tell us about this stage production. Well, what is it called? Vinny, it's called the Vinny. death and afterlife of Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. And so, that poster is really funny, isn't it? Is, it? <laughs> it is, it yeah. is. Um, basically, the director got this idea. He said to himself, what, what would happen if Van Gogh, you know, his ghost was roaming the earth and he found out how much his painting sold for today because he died penniless and <laughs> uh -huh. he was poverty stricken. His, um, he sold one painting when he was alive and that painting sold for about $70 and he painted he painted 900 paintings and he did about 1100 drawings and sketches so and he only painted for 10 years I don't know if you know that he wasn't you know an artist so he wanted to go into the priesthood but they didn't want they wanted him to learn Latin and he knew four languages so he said forget that you know and um, so how does that turn into the play now is this That's all part of the background it is. And um, who's, the, who's the director? It's Peter Abbey. And he's did he fantastic. write it? He wrote it. He directed uh, it. He's produced it. It's an original play. It's a dark and, comedy. And he cast you? He cast me. My manager called me one day, actually. She said, do you want to do a play? Um, you know, the, the director <coughs> is a client of mine, and he's doing oh, this play. Did. Oh. And he said that... <laughs> He said, we need a really strong actress for this role. So she said, I thought of you. And I said, okay, thanks, you know, <laughs> the pressure. So um, it's the only dramatic scene in the whole play. So oh, it is? So comedy, comedy. And all of a sudden, boom, I come in. Okay, My here, here's Vinny. They call him Vinny. Mm -hmm. Very, very, uh, I New think. New York. Very New York. That takes Vinny. place in Brooklyn, so. <laughs> Instead of Vincent, he's very Vinny. Yeah. So he returns from the dead to mm -hmm. sex, drugs, and art. Right. And the afterlife. Right. So go on and tell us the rest of it. So the protagonist basically summons his ghost, and he's, um, he, he gives him, you know, pointers on painting and how to improve himself, and basically he changes his life. Uh -huh. And then the the painter, this little girl who plays my daughter, she changes David's life. David is oh, so it's the all... artist. David changes my life. My daughter's nine years old. She's dying of cancer. Mm. And oh, so there is a kind of a tragic part to that's, it. Yeah, and, um, you know, I see this painting that he sees. He meets her in the hospital in the... Um, mm. They put him away because his girlfriend finds him chit-chatting and thinks she's, he's talking to himself, but he's really talking to Vinny, the oh, ghost of Van Gogh. Oh, he's talking to the ghost. Right. I got so it. they take him away, and um, he's in the, you know, the mental ward of this hospital, and he meets this little girl who has cancer. She's about nine years old. So he asks if he can paint her. And up till this point, he's painting happy faces on nudes and doing silly things, <laughs> so he just decides to totally do a different, you know, go a different route because Vincent's influenced him. I see. And so he paints her and he captures her whole essence and her uniqueness and her soul. And then the mother, me, I you. play Marjorie Stewart, 
she sees this painting and realizes that she basically gave up hope, you know, she, she left her daughter to just, she gave up all hope that she had. And, and, and so what happens is basically David changes her life and shows her that she still has this gorgeous, beautiful daughter. She shouldn't take her for granted. And I mean, in the end, she's going to have this painting which captures the whole essence of um. her daughter. So even if she loses her daughter, she's gained this painting. So and you see how he's brought it all around, right? He right? brings it all around. And, and it can be, you know, comedy, but in the end, there's a really deep part of it. Mm -hmm. And you get to play that strong role. Exactly. What about the costuming? Um, pretty much. Daily? I, what do you mean? Modern like, day costume? Modern day. It's modern day, yeah. And, um, and how big is the Pan Andreas? 88 seats. Oh, so it's 88. a small it's, theater. It's, it's small and intimate. And where it's is nice. it? It's on Melrose. It's, on, uh -huh. it's a couple blocks down from Paramount. It's 5125 oh, oh, I know. Melrose That's Avenue. great. That's fantastic. And you are Armenian. Mm -hmm. And have you used any of that background as far as acting goes? Do you think about anything from your, your background? To draw that, into the... Yeah. Well, it's not that I'm, well, I mean, we were, we were brought, raised in a very traditional Armenian household, but <laughs> the ironic thing, and there's a lot of ironies in, in the play and, in, you know, all of us that are involved in this, particularly the date that we previewed it, which was last night, October 22nd, um, my oh, yeah. father passed away of cancer last year, oh. and he passed away on the 22nd of October, oh. which was our preview night, so I dedicated my performance that night to him. Oh, that's great, but that was like very emotional it must have been emotional it is and my scene is uh, she's all she's over the place she's insane. emotionally charged and she's going you know it's a mother who's losing her daughter and she's I mean I'm open to just explore and go anywhere I want I mean, I'm well you can be because you're if you're drawing on what's happened to mm -hmm. you it just brings tears to your eyes just yeah. talking about it doesn't it yeah. now what about any favorite Armenian traditions Besides eating or cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Besides eating or cooking. Um, or cooking can be. Is that a favorite? <laughs> yeah, like, um, well, I, I, I do charity work. Do um, you? My mom's in the Armenian Relief Society. She's uh, been in there for years. And I've, uh, I've worked as a journalist for them whenever they needed me. And oh, I volunteer great. my time to them and um, ARS Voice, those kinds of things. Fantastic. Um, and... and Cooking? Can you cook anything? Oh yeah! Oh definitely. You I, can. I, oh yeah! I do a great dolma and and um, what else do I do? I do good ba pastries. You do? Yeah. Oh, you're you're a baker. Yeah. Those are the hardest yeah. things. It's I, easy to make pilaf and dolma yeah. and uh, shish kebab oh, yeah. and eggplant, yeah. but it's oh, hard eggplant. to bake. It is, and and we do the berok. I don't know if you uh -huh. if you're familiar with it. It's like a Linzer tart. It has the jam that. But I also do really good cupcakes. Oh yeah, we like love the cupcakes. Best. Chocolate coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Bring them yeah. next time. Well, Melanie, good luck okay. in your play Thank and you. in your career. Thank you. And all of you, don't forget to go see Melanie and Vinny, and keep writing to me at j a q u i n n one at aol dot com. That's the email and 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017. And we'll see you all on the Joan Quinn Profiles next time.